it's not like i wanted to be diagnosed with bipolar i was just like trying to find out what was wrong with me i'm like there's something really wrong i've got some real issues <laughs> Hey guys, it's Lena. Welcome back to my channel. I'm excited for this one. So today I'm about to tell y'all the story of how I was diagnosed with bipolar. It's kind of a long story. Yeah, I'm just gonna tell y'all the honest, real life truth. And that's why I say it's keeping it real because I'm just about to keep it real with y'all. So before I even get into the story, first off, mental illness is looked down on, but I don't feel that way. I don't want people to come to this video thinking that I'm about to talk down on myself or I feel ashamed about what is going on in my life. I don't feel that way. And talking about this kind of stuff makes you feel in a really down mood. Then maybe right now is not the best time to watch this video. I'm just wishing positive vibes on everybody. The whole situation is hilarious. Like the story is fried. There's a lot of stories within a story, even though I will be making fun of myself. I really do mean well, and I just like to look at life with a lot of laughter and humor. And I don't really like to focus too much on the negative parts. So if you feel like I'm taking this lightly, then I'm sorry. It's just my personality. I'm about to keep it real, but also keeping it lit with you guys. And I'm about to tell you guys the story of how I was diagnosed with bipolar. Get yourself some snacks, some to drink, because I'm hoping that I can keep this really short because nobody wants to hear me talk forever right so first i'm gonna give you a background about myself i suffered from anxiety i had a lot of separation anxiety a lot of people in my life just kept leaving like they were just coming in and out that really on like sparked my anxiety about people and about relationships and i just started to develop a codependency on people i was just used to people being here for a season and then being gone for a season and then maybe they come back i didn't want people to leave my life so i would do any i was a pleaser i would do anything to keep people in my life because i felt like they were leaving because it was my fault and it manifested itself in a lot of different forms i always was afraid that somebody was gonna leave me or that people didn't like me or i was unwanted so then when i was sexually abused i thought that i still needed this person in my life and even though they were hurting me i felt like if they left it would be detrimental that obviously is not the case like i needed that person to leave I didn't look at it like that like I like that was the only father figure that I had in my life so it really messed me up and it really hurt me it really hurt me I just felt like I was nothing I would disassociate myself from the abuse angry but more hurt and scared and just all those things like everything was just boiling up I never heard of anybody talking about them wanting to kill themselves but I was too scared to do it myself. But I was so depressed, I brought a whole weapon to school. <laughs> it was one of those like steak knives or something. Like, I wasn't even mad at sis. Like I wasn't even mad at her for telling on me. I really wasn't. I was admitted into a mental hospital. There was no other kids my age. There was two younger boys that were like eight and I was just listening to their stories. I was looking at it and applying it to my own life, even though it didn't have any, my life don't have anything to do with them, but I was feeling for them. Hospital, I got worse. I got so much worse. And then the girls was telling me how I, what I needed to do to get out of the hospital. They were like, you just need to tell the doctors this, 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 and they will let you leave. And I did that. I, I kept telling them the same things over and over and over. I don't want to hurt myself. I don't want to do it anymore. I don't have a plan. I just started answering their questions with no. Never in more detail. No, no. There was no really conversation between me and these doctors. Like, it was just so brief. And especially like the higher up doctors, when you're in a hospital, like to see the doctor, you only see them for five minutes. And then you gotta wait all day. We have to sit out here and wait a long periodically time. Those kids waiting all day for their doctor. They only see the doctor for five minutes. And then this person's supposed to walk down and tell you exactly what's wrong with you. They were forcing me to take medicine. So they were forcing me to take this medicine. If you didn't take the medicine, they would literally shoot you with a needle instead. So I just took, I don't even like shots. So once they threatened me that with one time, I'm taking whatever they was giving me. And I, oh. And my diagnosis when I left the hospital was I had anxiety, depression, and ADD. Um, I was forced into counseling. They told me either I go to counseling or I stay in the hospital. Like my family didn't really believe in it until like we were forced, they were forced to kind of get me help. I had got caught up with bringing that whole knife to school thing that it slingshot me into like considered crazy. 
there was so many rumors at my school about why I brought a knife to school. So once I got out of the hospital, I stopped taking the medication. I just stopped talking about it. I stopped talking about mental. I stopped talking about killing myself. I stopped talking about what I really felt. I stopped talking. I just stopped talking. I just started just depending on people to to have emotions for me. Seventh grade year, it was ruined. After I brought that knife to school, it ruined it. Like no one talked to me anymore. After I came back to school, all my friends stopped talking to me. You're lame and that is never going to change. My family, they didn't talk about mental health. We just talked, we, we were very heavy in church. I just spent a lot of time in church. I was still being abused at home once I got out of the hospital, like nothing changed. It didn't matter, teachers gave up on me. That was nothing new. School was kind of like, a, like it just happened, like it just happened. All I know is God got me through because I have no idea how I graduated from high school to be completely honest. And that's on period. When I graduated, I had been in nonstop therapy, nonstop doctors, nonstop 24 seven supervision. I just pretended <laughs> that I was okay. There's like moments where I'm just like, so one day I just remember the dude, the same dude that was abusing me as a child was help, having my little brothers help him with his garden. Y'all, I turned up on a million. I turned up to a trillion. I turned up. I went over there. I was trying to punch him. I was trying to fight him. I was trying to do all this stuff. Everybody was outside like, Lena, calm down, Lena, calm down. Grabbing me. Like, I was like, I'm gonna kill this motherfucker. <laughs> because he had taken so much from me and you had me messed up. You had me messed up if you thought, if you thought I was gonna let my little brothers be over there. Instead of really trying to talk it through with my family, I decided to leave home and try to just disassociate from everybody. My sister had got, became a really key person in my life. Kind of saw that I was back down the path of like, not wanting to be here anymore and she started to see that before anybody else did when i got away from all of that away from the doctors away from my family away from the shelter that was my first time really being out there on my own and i really didn't know what to expect was living with my dad for a little bit i was living with my aunt for a little bit i was even living in an apartment with roommates for a little bit that story is a story in itself about my living situation i was just really bouncing around my boss had taken me to the hospital i don't even know how i ended even ended up in the hospital but i was so depressed that i didn't even i just it didn't they said that i had major depression that was a diagnosis and I had psychosis as well. Why are you crying? I didn't want to have that. <laughs> I didn't want that. I didn't want to deal with that. And we all know how Lena deals with her problems. She doesn't. Just do it. They're like, do you want to hurt yourself anymore? Do you do it? I was like, no, 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 no. They're like, okay, take this medicine. I'm like, okay. And this time I'm like, you know what, I'm actually gonna try to take this medicine because I'm so, I don't wanna keep ending up back in the hospital. So I got out of the hospital. I was there for about two weeks. I was offered my job back and life continued on. Now I wish I could just tell y'all that I was diagnosed with major depression. I got sent home, I took the medicine and all was better, but it wasn't. Just getting warmed up. After I started taking the medicine, I got back into trying to see a counselor. Bro bro this lady had me so messed up my new counselor had me so messed up on so many levels bro i was really driving 30 minutes to see her for an hour and she will always go over with her other patients and give me 45 minutes and then she would just not ask me any questions i'm not a person that will just open up and talk to you all the time i can i can bullshit with you all day paying this lady to not talk about bullshit i can do that all day so she's just like, how does that make you feel? So I'm yelling at her because I was just so fed up with the whole system and I was taking the medicine. I wasn't really feeling any better to find a new doctor. But I didn't really want to find a new doctor. I just wanted to be done with it. Handle it. I can handle it. It really crossed my mind that I would ever want to be a stripper. I tell you, I stopped taking the medication and within like two days, I'm like, I'm going to be the best stripper you ever seen out here. And I don't know if it had a lot to do with my personality or if I think I just fell short of the glory of God, like we all do. And, you know, I, I, I you know, fell into temptation. Does that mean I'm a hoe? I don't think so. 
okay, my mental health is getting better, right? No, the whole time I was calling like, there's a hotline you can call to talk to counselors and whatever. So I was calling that hotline almost every single day for help through the hotlines and they started to really push for me to come in. I was a concerning case. Even if I didn't call the hotline, they were still calling me. They would call me like three times a day just to check on me to make sure that I was still alive. So I'm trying to act like I'm okay. I'm not okay. I'm always angry. My boyfriend at the time knows I'm not okay, but he don't really want to deal with that really. He didn't really want to deal with the bad parts of me. Stay or you're gonna leave. So I already knew my ex was gonna leave me and I was right. I didn't want to lose my job. I was trying so hard to hold it together, but then I lost it. Stay out of those chicken strips. Fuck it. After stopping taking the medicine. So when I went into the hospital for the, this is my third hospital visit. After I went to the hospital for the third time for another a suicide attempt, I was admitted for another two weeks. I need to get back on my medication. I really just want help, but I don't know how to talk. I don't know how to tell people what I'm really experiencing. So the doctors are telling me that I still have major depression and they forced me to take this medicine again. Like when I was little, they told me if I didn't take the medicine, they were gonna shoot me up with a needle. And we all know I'm not about to go down like that. So either get, take, give me the blue pill. In two weeks, I was able to go home, back to my apartment with my roommate and my sister. They really didn't ask too many questions about my mental health. I, like my sister definitely knew what I was going through but she had her own issues at this point like she had dealt with me when I was 18 all the way up until this point and for me to slip back into it I could just tell that she really she didn't have the strength to deal with it and my roommate she really didn't care that much I was still dealing with this on my own and I was still dancing instead of like taking that time to rest after coming back from the hospital I just danced even more and that really wasn't healthy because then I started drinking even more I just started feeling good I hadn't felt good in forever. It took me forever to feel good. I always felt crappy. Nothing ever felt good for me. I always had to find something to make myself feel better, whether it be drugs, alcohol, guys, like whatever I could do to make myself forget about how I truly felt, I would do it. So for once in my life, I just started feeling good off of nothing. Out of the blue, I was like, dang, maybe that medicine is working. For about a month. But I was feeling so good. I was feeling so good during this month. I wasn't sleeping. I was able to do a whole night shift at a club, get up in the morning, work a work a work a day job, and then just keep doing it every single day for like a whole month. I was just happy. I, th I thought I was just happy. Oh, it's lovely. My it was my month to pay rent, so we have about two months left on our lease. And I had really been, I was going through it this whole entire year of us living there, but we had made it to that point that the bills was paid up until that point. Ever since I started using guys, I feel so much better about myself. My turn to send in the rent money. My roommate, my sister would give me the money, I send in the rent. So they gave me this money. For some reason, my brain saw money in my bank account. And I decided that this was the perfect time for me to get a ticket, a one-way ticket to Florida so that I could go and be a stripper down there so that I could make a bag and take care of my family and make everybody realize that I'm not a big screw-up. <laughs> like, like, talking a mile a minute, I was just like, I was feeling good. That's all I'm gonna say, I was on a euphoric wave. I bought a one-way ticket. I didn't get my hair done. I didn't get my nails done. I didn't do anything I was supposed to do before going to even try to assume a position of being a Florida, a Florida Tampa stripper. Like, and I stayed with my friend and I tried to be a stripper. I, I, she tried to tell me, she was like, girl, this is not going to go well for you. I was like, no. I was a whole mess the whole entire trip. A whole mess. I think I could have done it right maybe if I was in the right mind, but I was not in my right mind. I'm still feeling good. Like, I should feel even worse than I did ever in my life. Like, oh, I screwed my roommate and my and my sister over, all, over our rent money. I messed up stuff with my job. Like I'm doing stuff that's just hurting people, but I'm not seeing it like that. This is only an hour flight. Oh, well then in that case, let me go ahead and get those three shots now and then bring me a shot of Bailey's once we get to cruise now to two. Come back home still on one. Like you would think 
I would come down and this is a whole month and a half now this is a month and a half of no sleep going non-stop doing fry stuff now the rent is late uh, court fees I had to pay the rent and they made me pay like an additional like $500 for the inconvenience I'm sick of worrying about wet cars I'm sick of worrying about the government I can't eat I'm broke, nigga. Something is not right. Like, just I couldn't bring myself down. I couldn't bring myself down. For some reason, I just love to do things to the extreme. I'll be the one instigating Eric's. I just had a lot of issues I was dealing with that I never wanted to deal with. I ended up coming over and taking me to the hospital because I was like tripping. Like I wasn't really like trying to kill myself. I was just talking crazy. They actually, they actually hospitalized me for a medical reason. They said that my anemia was really bad. So until both of them checked out, I was in a room by myself with a watcher I went to sleep I woke up I was on some medicine and I that actually made me feel like me I went back home to my apartment thank God I was able to get the money to pay our rent but long story short like I want to tell y'all though let me tell y'all real quick guess what I did all that to get that rent money y'all just for my roommate and my sister not to have the money we ended up getting another eviction notice that story another day i found somebody that got me the right medicine my doctor is a black woman and she cool for real she got me on seroquel and i started off with a very low dosage and over time we have increased it and i have not been hospitalized ever again since i feel so damn powerful i'm doing pretty good of not being in the hospital and not having any any more psychosis episodes and I have officially been diagnosed with bipolar. I was able to partner with the actual hospital. I do think getting help is really, really important. And I'm really glad that I didn't really ever give up on seeking help. And I always wanted to tell my story of how I was diagnosed and just kind of talk about this kind of stuff because it was always like, can't talk about it. Don't talk about this. Don't talk about that. And why not? Like with admitting my truth and being who I am and telling people it's okay not to be okay, but it's not okay to stay not okay. Does that make sense? I'm very grateful for my will to actually survive. very proud of myself for all of the strides that I have overcome and that I'm so willing to share. I'm willing to share with y'all and I'm so proud of myself because I never thought ever I would do YouTube. Anybody can get better. You can get help if you put the time into yourself you have to put the time into yourself and you have to love yourself and you have to not be ashamed to not be okay but also don't stay there i've learned so much from myself and i've learned so much from other people and i've learned so much just being alive every day this was lena keeping it real while also keeping it lit i hope you guys enjoyed i enjoyed bearing my soul to y'all it really feels good to get stuff off your chest and just kind of reminisce in the past and Think about how, how much you've overcome and why I'm going to be able to get up tomorrow and do what I got to do and take my medicine. If you guys want to hear more stories and hear more from me and my experiences, please let me know in the comments. That's what they're there for. You can use them. I'm going public now. Hello. I'm here. I hope this was a positive video. I, I, I told y'all some really heavy stuff, but at the end of the day, I made it. I made it, and you will too. We gonna make it. 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 We gonna make it together. We gonna make it. We gonna make it. We gonna make it together. I don't know what I'm gonna do with my channel. I'm just doing a little bit of everything because I have no idea where my niche is, so... If you guys have any video ideas for me please let me know other than that this was lena keeping it real while also keeping it lit please like subscribe and i will see you guys in my next video because there will be another video keep checking for me because i'm gonna still be here and on that note i'm out black leather glove no seat.